Are you ready? Welcome to PWR Reaction with Matthew Thomas and the man they call Meathead. And be part of the show by calling 877-317-9772. Good evening, wrestling fans, and welcome to PWR Reaction Survivor Series style. Along with Matthew Thomas and the man they call Meathead. And uh, it is time to hear your reaction to what happened at Survivor Series tonight. The 2015 version, here's how you can react with us. 347-996-5278. That's 347-996-5278. Or toll free at 877-317-9772. Matthew, we've got a lot of time to react. Part of the PWR Now Network. React to that, Matthew Thomas. Oh, that's uh, that's that's quite a lot. It's quite a lot to react to tonight. No question about that. Me hit coming off the uh, heels of a very uh, eventful ending to Survivor Series. There we go. So we'll start with the ending, then go to the beginning, and then to the ending. I feel like that's the name of a song by the Smashing Pumpkins. The beginning is the end mm-hmm. of the beginning, or is the end the beginning is the end. Do you remember those? If it's if it's not a song, it should be. Uh, I think it was on the Batman Return soundtrack, to be honest with you. Oh. I, I think there was both of them. Wow. So... Awesome. So, again, folks, to interact with us tonight, react, if you will, 347-996-5278 or 877-317-9772. Available on the Twitter machine at WCW Meathead, at The Real M. Thomas. Also on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash PWR show. First off, let's react to a guy who was mugging for the camera consistently over and over and over. He's the, the daddy of the Pro Wrestling Report and the PWR Now Network. All right, who saw Damian Nelson uh, right behind the announcers? And, uh, and and the cameras tonight did capture a moment of jubilation on Damian Nelson's face when Roman Reigns Did you say jubilation won? or jubilation? <laughs> I, think the, uh, I think my connection kind of got lost, but it was supposed to be jubilation with a J. Okay. With a, okay. With a J as in uh as in uh, jump, but uh, it, it, it <laughs> caught that moment of jubilation there, and then it would soon be just stolen right from the right from the air, like taking candy from a baby. Now, mm-hmm. was he trying to be the, the Miz kid? Was he trying to be the Undertaker guy? <laughs> I don't know. I think he was just in, in general, you know, uh, in general reaction. No pun intended, of course, and. Once handed it to him, like taking a title championship away from Roman Reigns, it was ripped right from his hands amongst all the confetti. Now, let me ask you this. Did Damian lay down on the ground and cry? Well, I didn't see him afterwards. So he was in the shot when Reigns won, but I could not find him in the other shot. Other shot. So he may very well have been on the floor crying. Uh, quickly, too, big fan of confetti. I always like big, massive confetti shots. They overdid the confetti on the hard camera side because when they went with the hard camera to the ring, it was so massive you could not see into the ring. They had to go with the shot from the guy in the ring. Too much confetti, literally. And, it, you know, that kind of color messes with a stream and with HD. You could not see a thing into the ring. Matthew, did you have the same problem? Yeah, I had the same problem, but the way I looked at it, it was kind of a uh, a key to me that something else was going to go on because they just – so much, I just thought, okay, this can't be it. Especially, we got Triple H coming in now. There's something's going to happen here. It's just, it's overdone. But I felt like it was overdone as a reason to signify, okay, this is not the end of the pay per view. They're going for something else here. So let's talk about the Survivor Series. First off, uh, did you notice the WWE Network uh, having issues? on all the platforms uh, earlier today. Uh, I want to speak to this too, Matthew. I brought this up a few mm-hmm. times. We brought it up with Linda Kay on uh, WWE uh, NXT reaction this last Wednesday. Um, my feed was on time this time. Right. I seem to only be having that audio lag on NXT shows. Huh. So did you wow. notice any lag at all today? No, it actually performed perfect tonight. A lot of times during pay-per-views, I will get a little bit of a lag or a buffer and I'll have to restart. Well, the I get a buffer but, moment. Yeah, but but tonight tonight it worked absolutely flawless for me. Okay, so they are at the uh, at the building in the uh, social media lounge. Tom Phillips in the social media lounge. How's our weather today, Joan? 
Yeah. Anyway, uh, the panel, as per the usual, you know, uh, you got Book, you got Renee Young, you've got um, um, Byron Saxon, who's Corey not Graves. calling the pay per view. Corey Graves, yep. Yeah. Uh, no special surprises here. Uh, at the Phillips Arena, uh, almost historic already building. I mean, it hasn't been around that long, but the Phillips Arena has had some pretty amazing events already happen at it, um, especially that being technically WCW country. Um, that was leading to a little bit of speculation that maybe Sting had something to do with the pay-per-view. Obviously, uh, nothing there. The opening match on the kickoff show, traditional Survivor Series elimination match, <coughs> Miz, Bo Dallas, Stardust, Connor and Victor taking on Neville, Bubba Ray, Devon, Titus O'Neil, and some Goldust. Is Darren Young injured? I didn't catch that. I, I I don't know. Uh, he was definitely missing tonight. Um, in, in recent in recent ye- in recent weeks, it seems like he's gotten a little bit more of a push for Titus O'Neil. He was featured prominently with the breast cancer campaign, so it seems like they're putting him out there by himself more and more. So I'm not sure about the injury deal, but I just I do know you've been seeing more uh, of him out there by himself, minus uh, Darren Young. Well, again, uh, traditional matches. I, I, if these were announced, they were announced uh, SmackDown or on the website or on main events, whenever. But uh, uh, good matches, I thought. Um, where was Cesaro tonight? Has he been hurt as well? I don't know. We last saw him on uh, on Monday, and I'm trying to think if we had a uh, Cesaro match at SmackDown. I believe we did. So he was wrestling as late as, as Tuesday, unless something's happened between now and Tuesday. I, I haven't heard. Hmm. Uh, the finish was Stardust running into Cold Dust, uh, but uh, dropped him. Anyway, he ran back uh, back into the ring of the Dudleys, catch him in a 3D for the pin and the win. Sole survivors, the Dudley boys, Titus O'Neil and Gold Dust. Um, I can't believe that actually Gold Dust was out there. Was that announced? Uh, I hadn't heard. It was kind of a surprise to me when I, I turned it on and saw it. I uh, got, got to pay to post the pre-show rather a little bit late, and uh, it was a surprise for me when I saw him out there. But um, I think this is where definitely where that match should have been. There was really no build to it. It was kind of a, a traditional Survivor Series elimination match for the sake of a traditional Survivor Series elimination match. So the post mm-hmm. or the pre-show rather was the uh, the fitting place for this. So the Survivor Series opened with. Um, Lillian Garcia singing the national anthem, uh, apparently the response to a potential ISIS threat actually at the show tonight. Uh, there was talk that they were going to attack the Survivor Series. I mean, if there isn't anything more American, it's a uh, Thanksgiving, you know, tradition, Survivor Series. Uh, an odd target, my you, but uh, I'm glad to see there was nothing that happened. And if it was thwarted, uh, we don't know. But you know what? Everything mm-hmm. went off without a hitch. Absolutely. And a, a very good response to start the show too. Uh, you know, very, very fitting way to you know say something without necessarily saying something. So opening match, uh, it is the semifinals: Roman Reigns, Alberto de Rio, Rio uh, Michael Cole, JBL, and uh, Jared King Waller on commentary. And you've got uh, Del Rio, who again. I, I, did he, does Zeb do all the talking for him? Because he said nothing. Hold mm-hmm. the flag, points at it, and that's it. Um, and again, it's not that Del Rio doesn't look good. Is it just me, or does Del Rio look the best he's ever been in WWE? He is chiseled from stone yeah, right he, now. He's uh, he's probably in his peak physical shape that we've seen him at in WWE. There's no I mean, doubt for that. like a 65-year-old wrestler, he looks amazing. <laughs> Because he started in the, uh, I think it was the 70s with Ric Flair. They were on that plane ride together. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah I mean, especially for surviving the plane ride as well, you know. Yeah, exactly. Um, it kept looking like it was Del Rio's night, but, folks, you could smell what everyone was cooking here in this building. Uh, Roman Reigns was going to the finals. Uh, Reigns recovering. The interview segment with JoJo where Dean Ambrose comes up. Uh, Matthew, they kept selling for you. They kept selling the the turn, possibly by a Dean Ambrose or a Roman Reigns, but they kept selling some sort of friction, some sort of heat. I love Kevin Owens' uh, interaction as well. Your thoughts on that whole um, uh, quote-unquote interview? 
Yeah, well, back to the, the Reigns match, it seemed like they were kind of throwing a little bit of what would end up being a red herring out there. He seemed a little bit heelish during the match. I don't know if you caught it or not, but there was one point they had to use the five-second delay because he let uh, a couple of bad words slip, and he just he seemed Here to have an extra a, little yeah. he, he seemed to have an extra little heel edge to him during the match, which. The few times that I saw it, I kind of liked it. I thought it fit him very well. I thought it fit the Roman Reigns character pretty well to see him, you know, to see him basically get that extra that extra gear and thought maybe it might be a sign of things to come later on in the night. But uh, the interview and then also the, the other later interviews we get with, with Reigns, I, I still think it's a bit of a chore. Uh, they really were pushing the – hey, we're best buddies, and we go out and drink beer and have a big old time. But, uh, Let me tell you, you about the best friend, <laughs> you know, the one that I like to wrestle yeah. with in the main event. <laughs> it's just it's just more of the same. And, you know, it's just uh, it's like we knew from day one that, you know, one day or a pass, we're going to have to cross. And I, just it, oh, overdone. And, I mean, it, it's what they've been trying to – Sell very, very, very hard for the last few months, and I mean, it was it was pretty much par for the course with what I expected here. Absolutely. Well, our next match was Kevin Owens and Dean Ambrose. So uh, I like the fact that they got the two semifinal matches out of the way, give the competitors some of the rest, no shenanigans. You know, where you go from semi-main right into main, and then the guy's got to wrestle without catching his breath. So it's Kevin Owens and Dean Ambrose, and again, a great fight between the two of them, but. Uh, Again, if you could smell really where they were cooking. Dean Ambrose with the win. Brother, we've been brothers since we've ever been brothers. But we're no longer brothers, brother. We're going to wrestle, brother, and we're going to be champion, brother. Well, you know, and the thing of it is, to me, at the time, the announced team actually literally sold them as brothers. I don't know if you caught it or not, but when they went to the interview, they're like, uh, Roman Reigns has to wrestle his brother, Dean Ambrose. There were multiple times where the announced team literally sold them as brothers. So, not brothers. Um, they look like they might be brothers from another mother, but uh, they don't seem to share any physical attributes. Uh, one is, you know, five foot nine. The other one's like six foot five. One's Samoan, one's Caucasian. So, not really all that close, you know. Uh, after the match, Ambrose recovers in the corner as they go to the replays. Uh, Another traditional Survivor Series elimination match. Again, if announced, it was announced late. Ryback, Sinkara, Kalisto, Uso, and Uso versus Miggy, Kofi, Xavier, Sheamus, and King Barrett. King Barrett, uh, I'm not sure why he is allowed to continue to carry the King King because wasn't he first eliminated again? I th- I think he was, but he got some good moves in. He was paying very close Speaking attention of moves, to uh, – Speaking of moves, his best move is when Xavier grabbed the uh, uh, started making music. Mm-hmm. Uh, dude, talk about getting English jiggy with it. King <laughs> Barrett breaking it down. Yep, taking some notes on Big E's pelvic thrust there. Oh, yeah, notes, rhythm nicely himself. played. <laughs> notes, nicely played. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, another traditional Survivor Series style match. Again, it's a way to get technically um, 20 different people on the show. You know, 20 different people that are on the roster, get them a payday, you know, get them to work, uh, fill up the show. That's fine. Your sole survivors, Ryback, Jimmy Uso, and Kalisto. Um, Matthew, we we had some not controversial is not the right word for it, I don't think. But we had some very controversial, for lack of a better term, build to the title match between Paige mm-hmm. and Charlotte, including what happened this previous Monday night on Raw with a reference to a young man who I believe, again, correct me if I'm wrong, Matthew, but committed suicide. I th- yeah, I think it was a, in, a drug overdose. Was it a, a which, drug overdose yeah. or something like that? Okay. I, I, I but, uh, so. yeah, referencing that. Did you see that in the replay tonight? Did they reference that? Not not at all. They had to pull apart, and they made reference to some personal comments, but that was never – Reed Flair was never once again addressed by name, and that certain segment of the uh, of the recap was was completely omitted. Completely omitted because it was tasteless. I mean, just my opinion, of course, but it was omitted because it was tasteless. So, um, but there's there was some real 
some real shenanigans uh, in this match. I mean, this was a a good, solid, physical match between these girls. Without that little Reed Flair thing, I really thought that, uh, um, you know, the feeling for this match coming into tonight felt well for me. I, I actually enjoyed it. I I got more out of this match than I thought I was going to get. Matthew, your thoughts on the match? It was match? very refreshing to see a one-on-one match that, that there was – there was a, a personal feud that was developed between these two, not not referencing, you know, going the, the read right like they went on Raw, but basically just having two women that had a storyline leading into the match that wanted to fight each other for the title. And that's something that's been missing so often recently with the Divas division is they just lump all the Divas together right there in one storyline, fill the Diva quota for the night, get them all right there, and don't develop a storyline between two women in just a one-on-one competition, and they did that tonight. I thought the match was solid. I thought they told a good story. I thought they had a good amount of time to tell that story. I thought the crowd was absolutely terrible during this match. I thought the crowd was disrespectful during this match. The match was two minutes in, and they have to just try to show how smart they are and that they're on the Internet and that they like Sasha with the We Want Sasha chance, completely disrespecting the two in-ring performers that are two of your more solid divas in the division, but they just want to get themselves over and they just want to make their voices heard and get on TV and never be content with anything that's put in front of them, appreciate anything that they're getting and try to hijack the uh, – Try to hijack the show, hijack the match, which I, I thought the I, I thought at times the the pacing tonight kind of lagged a little bit, and I thought it was very reflective with the crowd. I thought the crowd was on their hands for a good portion of the night, and you know this was as frustrated as I got with the crowd because I thought these two girls were in the match, were in the ring trying to tell a good story, good physical match, and they were getting no support whatsoever from that crowd. So it was a great wrestling match. Again, ironically enough, Matthew, I know how big a fan you are of three team girl or three girl team versus three girl team or one on one with the other two girls down at the side. No, this was female versus female for a reason and for a championship. So your winner of the match, Charlotte, with the figure eight and getting Paige to tap out. I really liked the way this ended. I was not really confident getting here. But you know what? These girls delivered. Absolutely. Um, Tyler Breeze and Dolph Ziggler. Matthew, we've lamented over and over on this very program about what in the world is Dolph Ziggler doing? Because tonight, I swear, I, I, I got a personal message from Vince Neal from Motley Crue and says he wants his Motley Crue shout at the devil look back. You know, give him back his eye black, give him back his chains and his leather. And, uh, you know, if he starts, if Dolph Ziggler starts coming out singing too fast for love, I'm done. I tap out. (laughs) And and the other thing, too, Tyler Bree is a a phenomenal talent, but uh, he looked like an avatar. Excuse me. Yeah, he looked like an avatar that was shown off as dingling because he had a big blue stick. (laughs) Matthew, your thoughts on, on the gentleman, their attire, and the uh, uh, the match itself that they put on for us. You just feel like Dolph is just reaching for anything that he can reach for to kind of tweak his gimmick and to set him apart any differently. And you'll see him do – you'll see these random wardrobe changes once every few months. And, you know, now he's got the, the black under his eye, and it's just – uh, I mean, it was it was an okay enough wrestling match, and I think that at least it's given him a prominent storyline. Because if not for this match, Dolph probably would have been on the pre-show elimination match or the the elimination match that was in the the actual show itself, just to kind of just to put him there with the likes of uh, of King Barrett and uh, your then Money in the Bank holder Sheamus. So this has actually been a storyline for Dolph, but. I, this has been more of a vehicle to get Tyler Breeze over. He's had Tyler Breeze promos. I haven't really seen a promo or an interview or anything that Ziggler has done during the storyline that I felt really has driven his stock up. And one thing that does make this a little bit odd is 
I feel like Ziggler and Breeze have a similar look to each other. Ziggler's a little bit bigger. I mean, there's a different build. But for the most part, the guys look kind of similar to each other. So it's been a little bit of a an odd first feud for Breeze and the fact that he's going up for – He's going up against somebody that doesn't look a ton different than he does. Well, there was a mention, I think it was JBL that even said it when uh, Dolph Ziggler was addressing uh, Tyler Breeze, be it on Twitter or wherever it was, dude, I know you. I was there. I was you. Mm -hmm. Young, brash kid, good-looking, trying to make a name for himself. I swear if we get Mikey and Nikki and all those other Spirit Squad guys that come up, (laughs) <laughs> uh, we could have a thing here, but uh, your well, winner of the match is kind of breeze. Is, is Ziggler and just kind of a a last attempt to try to get over, just reunites a, a new Spirit Squad 2015. Wouldn't that be? It great? brings in Tyler Breeze. <laughs> yeah, yep. Oh, you know who the best member would be? Okay, so obviously we've got uh, Ziggler, we've got Tyler Breeze. Um, they could bring in Summer Rae. Um, but. The, the excuse my cough, folks. The key to the whole group, our truth. <laughs> the key fantastic. to the whole group, our truth. Our yep. truth would get that gimmick over. Because I mean, I, mean, yeah, I, don't, add, I, uh, I, don't, I don't know if you caught SmackDown this week or not, but if you didn't, it's worth going back and watching. They had Miss TV to kick off the show. They had all the, you know, the four people left in the championship tournament come out there, cut promos. And then like we've gotten in the past, we had our truth intro music hit. Our truth come out there, cut a promo, only to find out that he's not in the tournament. <laughs> I'm telling you, if there was anybody who could get over a Spirit Squad 2015, it would be our truth Yep. Come on, y'all. Let's do this thing. Hey, we ain't been doing nothing but working chopper matches. Come on, man. <laughs> I'm telling you, he could do it. Uh, Mm -hmm. (laughs) uh, The video package is going from the, you know, uh, beginning of the uh, interaction all the way up to uh, this pay-per-view for the Wyatt family and the Brothers of Destruction, Kane and Undertaker. When you watch them in a whole, they're fantastic. You know, there was the taking the powers and then getting them right back and having, you know, Kane and Undertaker rolled over the Wyatt family in the middle that made things a little kind of eh. But uh, this was a big match, and this was a big deal. This is the 25th anniversary of Undertaker's debut at the Survivor Series, uh, and they played it out like that. I never have heard the announcers lay out for an entrance song as they did for the Y family. I literally was in verse two, <laughs> singing along with the song, going, wow, they're not saying a thing. Mm-hmm. You know, because everybody knows the words to the first two lines of a song, you know, when it's an entrance song, but that's because they, you know, are by the, at the ring by then, or they're, um, you know, announcers are saying something. You got to hear the whole thing. And then Kane, and then Undertaker, and they come out to the ring. I thought it was absolutely well done. Your thoughts on the finish to the match and the way it went out? You know, outside of the intros and outside of the, uh, and I really like the the montage of the different uh, different versions of the Undertaker when he was coming to the ring. Uh-huh. Outside uh-huh. of the intro, I, I thought it was just very very standard issue and predictable. I, af- about halfway into the match, I was just wishing that the 25th anniversary of the Undertaker was just some type of ceremony or something that we got where we could still feature him, but not necessarily in this match. And the reason I say that was because for the first time in a long time, this Undertaker, the actual in-ring appearance, didn't feel as special to me because he's in there with the Wyatt family. He's not in there with the Lesnar. He's not in there with one of these rare matches that we see built up to throughout the course of the year, you know, this is him wrestling back-to-back pay-per-views, and I just felt like the in-ring presence of The Undertaker, it it lost a little bit of that specialness with having him, you know, wrestle back-to-back, back-to-back pay-per-views like that. Okay, and that's kind of how I felt, too, but I guess I was just, you know, feasting on the, um, you know, it's like going to a Thanksgiving dinner and just eating, you know, uh, your favorite side dish and not really eating the Mm -hmm. turkey. Because the turkey was the match. I mean, I'm just stuffing myself on buttered rolls and, you know, uh, you know, uh, gravy and mashed potatoes and not really having any turkey because the turkey was dry. But, yeah, that's kind of what so, it was. So wait, the match so, was what so it was. What you're saying is you got, 
you got a belly full of Undertaker tonight. Oh, I've got a belly full of Undertaker, and I'm about to go drop a cane after we're off the air here. So after the match, that <laughs> cane uh, comes back in, stands with the Undertaker. I enjoyed some of the parts of the match. Uh, I, I thought it was funny that Kane had to time his lay down next to Undertaker and had to shift a little bit just to get them lined <laughs> properly. It was kind of funny. I mean, <laughs> but that's what you expect from the match. You expect sure. to see those spots. All right, main event: World Heavyweight Title Tournament Finals. Roman Reigns, Dean Ambrose, brothers of <laughs> brothers, <laughs> gonna wrestle each other for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Your winner of this match, and I say that in a very key and distinct way, your winner of this match, Roman Reigns and new WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Matthew, start off with your feelings on this match from entrance to pinfall. Well, uh, Roman Reigns came down the stairs pretty good. He didn't miss a step. You know, he didn't trip and fall, so that that part went pretty well. I, I thought the rest of it, reminded me quite a bit of what we saw in the earlier match. And I think that's one of the dangers that you run into having Roman Reigns wrestle two times on the same card. I mean, it's just unfortunately at this juncture going to be a different variation of Superman punch, spear, drive-by, I mean, a handful of moves because that's where he's at right now. And you, you can't really protect that when you have him wrestle two matches on a card like this. I mean, I thought the match was it was it was pretty much what you expected. I have a feeling that after he after he beat Ambrose, that something else was going to happen because I, I didn't feel like the closing sequence of this match really felt like the closing sequence of a match you would expect. The the false finishes I just didn't feel like were there. It just didn't feel like the climax of WWE Survivor Series, and we had another, like, 20, 21 minutes before the top of the hour. So you kind of knew something was uh, something was was going to transpire here. So we talked about it at the open of the show tonight, the confetti, out of control. Granted, <laughs> the match, now, again, you know, for people that don't like to be spoiled, you weren't paying attention to the time, most of us look at the clock and go, ah. And back in the pay-per-view model days, yeah, I get it. You know, they usually run up to 45. But, boy, Roman Reigns won this match at 35, I think it was. Yeah, yeah. all right, come on, give me my shenanigans because it's coming. Couldn't see Roman Reigns through the confetti from the hard camera, so they zoom in on the guy or they uh, kick over to the guy on the uh, in-ring cam. Here comes Trips. No shake of the hand, no shake of the hand. A spear to the boss. Uh Uh-oh. Something's gonna, and here comes the Celtic Warrior kick. Uh, I thought when they did the cash ins that both men had to be standing and given a, you know, not that I care, but uh, for believability's sake uh, and continuity, I thought both gentlemen had to be, you know, able to stand and defend themselves when you do a cash in. Granted, you could have had, the, you know, the teeth kicked out of them, but you, before you ring the bell, you have to stand them up. The bell was rang in a pinning position. Mm-hmm. Matthew, your thoughts? Yeah, yeah. I'll have to go back and, and look at previous cash ins. It's a good question. Um, yeah, it uh, <laughs> it was, I'd say, a bit of a surprise. But at this juncture, with the match going off the air so quick, it wasn't a surprise. You know, with where we're at in the show, you felt like something was going to happen, and and this was pretty much the only other option left. And and when you go back and you look at what they did tonight with this, the the criticism of this is, on one hand, Sheamus has been made to look extremely weak. Sheamus, especially tonight, was practically a comedy character with the way that they have booked him since he's held this briefcase. So I don't know that they've had another Money in the Bank briefcase holder actually cash in, win the title, looking weaker than Sheamus has looked during this run. But at the same time, this was, you know, most likely had Seth Rollins not gotten hurt, probably not where we would have gone, but this was actually the perfect out tonight because you're able to get out of Survivor Series without turning reins, without turning Ram, with, without turning Ram, Rambros. Yeah, that's, that's what the new tag team needs to be called, Rambros. Uh, Seth <laughs> Rollins and, uh, or 
Ambrose, Ram Ambrose. Ambrose. <laughs> That's what we need to yeah. do. But you're able to get out of this without turning anybody. Ambrose and Reigns can still be buddy-buddy and brothers and, and faces. And Sheamus is a heel anyway, so he's just doing what a heel would do. So this this actually is, as far as anybody as a placeholder champion, for what WWE wants to do right now, this probably actually made the most sense without having to really, really, you know, really stir the waters and, and make any big moves. So I understand that the... Uh, Money in the Bank winner usually looks a week before he cashes in to add that bit of surprise because once he cashes in, he's going to get all this heat back anyways because then he's going to start winning matches again. Mm-hmm. Um, it happened to CM Punk, it happened to Edge, it happened to all sorts of people when they cashed in their Money in the Bank uh, briefcase. I just... <laughs> I, I'm disappointed at the way they're going to drive this character the camera over the top of Roman Reigns' face as he's crying. Again, if, if we're supposed yeah. to suspend believability here, one, how are you getting the camera over the top of his face? If I just lost, get the effing camera out of my face. Two, aren't you a wrestler? I mean, Tom yeah. Hanks said there was no crying in baseball, and those guys are soft compared to wrestlers, right? What? What are they doing? That, that's my question. Because Reigns, at this point, you've got work to do, and, and you've got to work to protect him, to to make him what you want to make him into. In closing Survivor Series with Roman Reigns on his back crying, there's nothing good that can come out of this. There's nothing. There there is nothing beneficial for Roman Reigns as a professional wrestler on his back crying because he lost the title. You know, we were talking about this before we went on the air, Meathead. I mean, you've seen guys lose it a little bit when they've won a title or, you know, a big moment like that that clearly meant quite a bit to them, you know, it, which clearly Correct. wasn't planned. But but this right here, okay, this is not – now, if, if Survivor Series had gone off the air, Roman Reigns wins the title, and he is in the middle of the ring – in just a heap of confetti in a puddle of his own tears because he's so emotionally <laughs> happy that he won. <laughs> like, like that's one thing, okay? Like, honestly, that may have made you connect with the character a little bit more because it's like, okay, regardless of you know what we're seeing, this genuinely means something to the guy. Faze, who just got cashed in on, loses title within minutes, laying in the ring crying because he lost his title. I, th- this doesn't work. This doesn't do anything beneficial for Roman Reigns. And I just looking on Twitter a few minutes ago, you know, the screen caps are already there. You can expect some probably very interesting things coming out here in the next few days with this with this image. Like, I, I expect that you're going to see this image uh, just as much, if not more, as you saw the surprise when Undertaker lost, guy. Roman Reigns in the <laughs> middle of the ring crying because he lost his title – I tell you what, I think that this this probably did uh, untold amounts of serious further damage to the, the push they're trying to give Reigns and, and the build of uh, of Reigns because nowhere in the journey of Roman Reigns does having him laying in the middle of the ring crying because he lost the title do anything at all to uh, to to enhance the the whole arc they're trying to give him. I'm trying to Google search Roman Reigns cries at Survivor Series. I'm coming up with pictures of him wearing lipstick and you know all sorts of crazy stuff. So I don't know if I want to use my computer for that. So I'm just going to stop. But yeah, <laughs> this um, here's the here's how business works. For those that care about Roman Reigns, they'll feel they're screwed and they'll have more investment in him because again, how how many times have we just you know, beat this down everyone's throat. The money is in the chase, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. The only problem is there's no money in the chase if you don't care about the guy chasing. So Indeed, you know, and here and here's the thing too, like th- this is very reminiscent of what they did with Daniel Bryan. The whole underdog getting screwed out of the title thing worked a little bit better with Daniel Bryan. 
solely based on his stature. You know, Bryant's a smaller kind of underdog-looking dude. Roman Reigns, with A, his build, and B, the attitude with which he carries himself, Reigns is not a very viable underdog. And I think that's one thing that WWE has really has really messed up in, in their whole building of Roman Reigns is – they're playing the underdog route, and with Reigns, just based on his stature and based on the way that he carries himself, it's not a very solid fit for him. It's uh, it is tough to look at <laughs> Roman Reigns sitting there. And again, you know, there's uh, I saw a quick screen cap of uh, our friend Damian Nelson from uh, another friend of the Pro Wrestling Report, longtime friend uh, Chris Morris here. Uh, screen cap of Roman Reigns just yes, and in the background all you see is Damian Nelson's arms. <laughs> now what we need is somebody to take the time to go ahead and uh, <laughs> what we need is somebody to take the time and go ahead and give me a screen cap of him going, oh, <laughs> oh that's good stuff. I am so excited. <laughs> I've been so excited for the people that were excited about it. Mainly Damien, I think he's the only guy. That's why I've been laughing so hard. Uh, folks, uh, we appreciate you listening to this podcast. And, you know, there's many other podcasts available on the PWR Now Network. Matthew, this uh, this afternoon, holy balls, me and Gene Okerlund and the hotline got launched and recorded in the Hard Rock Cafe in Atlanta, Georgia, right before the Survivor Series tonight. Uh, do you think that ISIS was more upset about Survivor Series is the fact that Mean Gene's on the air now. Oh, wow. Now, let me ask you this. Has it officially uh, dropped? Is, is dropped the terminology that all the hit cats are using these days? <laughs> I'll, ask, I'll ask the kids later. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but what you can do is you can subscribe to it on iTunes and get on over to pwrshow.com for all the information. But uh, Mean Gene recorded it. Has it dropped? I have no idea yet, so I'll have to check with the interns on that. Uh, but we've got this. We've also got the Head Podcast with Al Snow and others coming down the pipeline. Uh, plus, again, the Double D Podcast with Damian and Dave Hero. Uh, send your emails or uh, tweet us at uh, PWR Show. Uh, we want to hear what Damien was thinking. We want to know second by second, from jubilation to just agony. We got to know and put that and have him talk about it on the Double D podcast, so we can just hear his pain. We'll we'll, we'll talk you through it, Damien. It's okay. Speaking of Damien, uh, word has he is still scheduled for this Wednesday night WWE NXT reaction right here oh, wow. on the PWR Now Network. So, folks. We are going to see you tomorrow night uh, for Raw's reaction uh, for Matthew Thomas. I'm the man they call me Dave. Thank you for stopping by. And uh, with that, <laughs> go back and watch the show again on the WWE uh, Network and just watch Damien right over the announcer's shoulders. Uh, that poor guy. <laughs> so long, everyone. Sweet and sexy is back. PWR is coming to WrestleMania in Dallas, and you can join us in a private VIP suite for the biggest WrestleMania ever. Get tickets to the event, a seat in the suite, snacks, drinks, and more to create the best WrestleMania experience possible. Tickets are available now in limited quantity only at PWRshow.com. Buy now and don't miss out on the WrestleMania suite experience with PWR. Get new episodes of PWR Reaction exclusively at PWRshow.com, along with the latest episodes of the Pro Wrestling Report, The Hotline with Mean Gene Okerlund, and The Head Podcast with Al Snow. Get it all now only at PWRshow.com. Thanks for joining us for PWR Reaction. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast right here on iTunes so you never miss an episode. You can also download new episodes online at PWRshow.com where you can also find podcasts from Mean Gene Okerlund and Al Snow along with the best pro wrestling coverage in the world today from Damian Nelson and David Harrow. Until next time, this is PWR Reaction Podcast signing off.